Hello everyone, welcome in this video. In this tutorial I will explain how to send downlink messages to Dragino uh, via T-Mobile IoT creators. Uh, this tutorial actually built uh, on top of the previous uh, tutorial that we have made uh, on how to connect uh, the device to, uh, to, uh, with the grid platform via, via IoT creators that you can find here. And in this next tutorial we'll start by uh, implementing a downlink messages. Uh, before we can do that, there are some instructions that we need to follow from T-Mobile IoT creators. And the first uh, instruction starts by uh, verifying the uh, or registering the application URL that we have used previously to set our project. Uh, the URL that we need to verify is the webhook URL that we are using. And in order to be able to send downlink messages through IoT creators, we have to verify uh, this URL. And the IoT creators documentation uh, explains uh, how to do this, but we can actually uh, show this right away. So uh, you start by uh, using this uh, snippet of code. You of course will have to change the authorization key and the uh, URL but you can uh, simply use a online tool to uh, send this request to IoT Creators uh, server. And if you uh, receive a successful message, then you know the, that, you, that your webhook is ready to, to send downlink messages uh, through IoT Creators. Before continuing, we actually have to uh, create new command types and those will be the commands that we will be sending to our devices. So in this tutorial we will create two command types. Uh, we will create a first command which we will call reset. And for this command we don't need any information. So after creating a uh, command type, uh, same as previously, uh, this command type will have its own hash ID, which we will use later on. Let's create a second command uh, where we actually set the measurement cycle. Uh, this is the default uh, template is already created, so we can use this. Uh, we don't need a, a starting time or end time. We want to execute this right away. And in this form field, uh, we actually define an interval of type number and this is already predefined for us. Uh, it's going to be a list from which we can select and so these are the keys that will be stored uh, when we initialize for example a, a change in the reporting interval to 10 seconds. It's possible to add more options but for now these default settings are, are uh, satisfactory since we will be probably changing the interval to, uh, to five minutes. And we can also set the default value, uh, you can say five minutes. Add and update. You can see that this command uh, also doesn't require uh, start time since we probably want to reset the device right when we want to uh, right when we initialize this message but we can of course uh, customize this command so uh, the only thing that we have to change from the pre uh, uh, that we have to add to uh, the previous tutorial is to update our device type in our device type, we can allow what commands can be set uh, on this device. So it will be the reset, reset and the measuring, uh, change of the measuring cycle. And we also have to edit the uh, event handler. So we can start with this code. And same as before, we have to define uh, the hash IDs of the commands. So the reset hash ID. It's 
this one. Measurement cycle hash ID is this one. Again, this hash ID is unique and it will be different for each user. And what you have to do in this script is uh, you have to actually change this IT creators token that I've also, also uh, explained here. So it will be uh, created for you uh, when you initialize your project on IoT creators, but you have to convert it to uh, a hexadecimal representation. And that is actually explained uh, in the IoT creators documentation. Or if you navigate to uh, create subscription, you can see how this authentication code is created. So if you enter your username and your password here, it will automatically generate uh, your uh, key. But you can also go to any base64 uh, converter uh, and uh, encode the password here. Okay, so when we have set uh, all the necessary information, uh, we can update this code. And we can actually schedule uh, the first command. Uh, by default, the uh, Dragino uh, sends a message once an hour, but uh, let's change that to five minutes. So we can schedule a, a set measurement cycle on the uh, Dragino device, so we have to see uh, which device we actually want to do it on. And we want to do it on uh, the device that has its EMI already registered. Since the first one is just a dummy device that's used when we register uh, our webhook on our creators. So we can schedule a command. And we can change uh, this to any value from this list. So let's try five minutes. Okay, so we can see that the request has not been processed uh, successfully. Uh, we can see the response from the server in the HTTP request. And we can see that the serial number uh, not found. So if we actually look closely uh, on the IT creators documentation, uh, in the request we need to uh, provide the uh, EMI of the device, uh, which we actually have stored in one of the form fields. But we actually have to edit this EMI key that needs to be in front of the, uh, the number. So if we update the code and try to schedule a new command, we can now see uh, that all the requests have been properly sent. We can see that all the commands uh, successfully completed. So we can also look at this HTTP request. See the message accepted. As you can see, we are now in the monitoring environment uh, we have created previously. And of course, the commands can also be set from the monitoring environment. So we can go to a location and we can schedule a command here. Right now we have a selection of commands that we have created, so we can again set the measurement cycle. We don't need any delay because we want to uh, schedule this command right away. And we can change the reporting interval to, for example, 10 minutes instead of the 5 minutes as we did previously. And we can add this command, which is now scheduled to be sent. And if we... Uh, Reload, we can now see 
that the command has been sent because the HTTP request was successful. So we can look at this command and we can see more information also in the monitoring environment. So we can see the creation date and we can see when uh, the command actually was uh, sent. So we can see that we managed to send this command right away. So there were no issues.